Hey, this is Welcome back to another video on this channel. Today, I will, uh, I will show you how to program a trading strategy for the MetaTrader 5. And this time, it will be a RSI grid trading strategy. So the general idea that I had into my mind was that we will have a chart like just any chart like this one hour euro solar chart and we will take the RSI indicator which you can find in the navigator of your MetaTrader 5 in the indicators and then oscillators folder it is this relative strength index indicator and this indicator can be used to like counter trade the indicator <clears throat> So a typical use case would be to check if the RSI value is above 70 or below 30. And if it is below 30, we would buy. If it is above 70, we would sell. And you can see here, sometimes this can be a really good, really accurate entry signal. Like here, for example, at this point, it would be a buy signal. Uh, here we would have a sell signal, another sell signal and another buy signal and i mean it could be accurate like here for example this would be a good buy trade because the market starts to uh, increase in value after this point but sometimes it's not the best entry indication like here or here because this would be a sales signal but the market is still rising so, so this is where the grid idea comes into play so i think we could just sell here and then sell again here, sell again here. And at some point the market will turn around and then we will close all of the trades in profit once we hit a specific amount of points in profit or a specific amount of euro, US dollar, whatever. Um, I didn't really decide yet, but this is like the general idea. This is what I will do in this video. And even though it will not be like super complex from a pro programming viewpoint, I will not explain like, the complete basics like variables and data structures. If you are interested uh, in learning these things like the complete basics and um, if you want to learn MQL5 programming from a beginner level to a more advanced level, you can check out the link in the video description and you will find the MetaTrader 5 Masterclass, which is still um, available for a discounted price uh, for, I think, one or two more weeks. So you should check it out. You, you should check it out before the price increases. You will also find a video with a complete content list. But for this video, let's start into programming. So when we write a program in the MetaTrader 5, the easiest way to do so is to use the MetaQuotes language editor. You can open it if you click on tools and then MetaQuotes language editor. Here you will find um, a um, yeah programming interface and we can start create a new program, clicking on new in the upper left corner. And if I do so, I can select expert advisor template. It's usually pre-selected, click on next, and then choose a name. We can choose something like RSI grid EA or grid program. You can choose whatever name you like, then click on next, next, and finish. And we will find a template for a brand new expert advisor. And let me just erase the comments and the properties because we don't need it and it doesn't really affect the program. And I like to rearrange my brackets. So what do we um, need in order to um, make the program behave the way it should? So first of all, of course, we will have to uh, calculate the RSI value. So for this case, we will need a handle for the RSI indicator. A handle is used in MetaTrader 5 programming to define a specific indicator so the program has to know is it a rsi with 14 periods or 15 or 8 and what time frame is it on and what symbol we want to calculate it for so this is why we will uh, initialize or handle rsi variable which is of type integer in the on init function and we will put the return value of the i rsi function into the variable so for the IRSI function, which if we uh, move our cursor into this word IRSI and press F1 on our keyboard, we can read about this function in the documentation. It is a, a predefined function. It's part of the MQL5 framework. And we have four parameters. And this is exactly the definition that we need to say what specific indicator we calculate. So we need the symbol, the period, the uh, 
moving average period and the applied price. And these are the things that we can also like change here. If we go to the settings of the relative strength index, we have the period and the applied price. And of course, we choose the time frame here directly in the, in the chart and the symbol. So what we um, do now is we will use underscore symbol as a symbol, which uh, is a system variable that always holds the symbol name of the current chart. So in this case, it would be euro dollar. Then we have the time frame. And usually I create a global variable for this or a input variable. So we go input enum time frames, time frame, it's the name of the variable. And we can choose a default value like the H1 period. And then we just choose this variable here and uh, use it as a time frame for the IRSI function. And then we need the periods. Um, we can also make this a input variable, RSI periods. Let's go with the default value first. Oh, and we can say this is the RSI time frame. And then we have the RSI periods. And then we have the applied price. I mean, we can use the price close as a hard coded price. Uh, we can also say RSI applied price and then create another input variable for this. Enum applied price. There's another enumeration for this and we can choose um, price close as a default value. Since we created these three input variables, the user is now able to change them. So uh, make sure that you compile your program from time to time to create an executable file um, from this text file here. So if I compile this, we can go to the MetaTrader 5 and then find the program in the navigator here. So go to Expert Advisor and here we should find RSI Grid Program. And if I activate it on the chart, so just drag and drop it on the chart, we will find the inputs here. And you can see these are the three inputs that we defined. And the user can now change the time frame or the close uh, or the, the applied price and also the periods here. But yeah, let's not do this for now. Let's go on with the programming. <clears throat> So since we have this handle now, which is a just a definition of the RSI. So this handle will be stored or this, like the, the MetaTrader 5 concept um, working with indicators um, is like this. You define a specific indicator here and then you store it pretty much in a integer variable. But this integer variable is not really interpreted as a number but instead it is a pointer to a specific um, uh, location in the memory of your PC. And in this location, there is some data stored, which will help the meter trader to recognize what specific indicator you want to calculate. So this is why this handle um, is more or less used as a description of one specific indicator. And this is why we can use this handle in the copy buffer function, which is the next function that we will use um, to identify or to, to declare what specific indicator we want to get the data from. So we can choose any handle that we have here and we have the handle RSI and we will choose this one as a first parameter for the copy buffer function. Then we have the um, buffer number. Oh yeah, the... Um, the reference entry here is a little bit complex for the copy buffer function, but let's just have a look at the uh, parameter um, list here. So we have a buffer number and the buffer number is just like um, the indicator or buffer. So we can see here in the data window, this RSI indicator, it only has one buffer. It only provides one value for every bar in the chart. So this is usually buffer number zero, or you can also say main line. It's up to you. So main line and zero would be the same output. So then we have the starting time or the starting index. Let's go with the starting index. Um, it's better, I think. So starting position would be one, which means that we will start at the, um, not at the current bar in the chart, but at the previous bar. So the current bar would be index zero. This is index one. This would be two, three, four, five, and so on and so on. And then we have the count. In this case, I will go with one. And then we, as the last parameter, we have a double array or a reference 
uh, to a double array. And this is the array where we store the data inside. So we will just create a double array of uh, which is named RSI. And don't forget these um, uh, 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 squared brackets here, which means that this is not a normal uh, double variable, but instead it's an array that can hold multiple double uh, values. So now we store the RSI value for the last bar in this RSI array. And we could go ahead and write a chart comment and write something like RSI uh, colon and then double to string RSI uh, array at index zero. And we want to print, yeah, let's say five digits. So if we compile the program like this, and if we now run it in the chart, so RSI grid program, drag and drop it on the chart, uh, one hour, 14 periods, close price, let's give it a go. Okay, you can see the RSI value is now printed in the upper left corner here. And if we move the cursor to the last bar here, you can see this is exactly the value that is now printed in the chart. Okay, so this is how to get a indicator value. And I just remembered or I just um, thought about like maybe it's better if we get two RSI values. So just change the count um, parameter here to two. And now we will have two values stored in the RSI array. And we can just print both of them here. Um, so we can print the value at index zero and at in index one in the RSI array now. So double to string RSI at index one five digits and let's go compile. So now we will see two values in the upper left corner and you can see at index one, we will now find the value for the last bar and at index zero in the array, we will find the value for the previous bar. And we will now use these two values to check if RSI uh, at index one is above 70, for example, and RSI at index zero is below 70. Or we could say, um, uh, wait, cell RSI cell trigger. We will make this a input variable, cell trigger like this, and this would be a cell signal. So let's create the input variable for this, input double RSI cell trigger will be 70, and we will create the RSI by trigger also, which will be 30 for now. So um, we would have the cell signal here and then we can create another if statement here. We can check if the RSI is now below the RSI by trigger and if the previous value is above the RSI by trigger. And in this case, we will have a by signal. So what we want to do now is we want to include the uh, Ctrade class so include trade slash trade dot mqh and this will create the C trade class which will help us because now we can uh, create a object variable of type C trade and we will use this later on to open positions. Um, yeah, I think we can open positions now already. So let's go here. Let's say trade dot sell. And I'm not really explaining a lot here because I did this like 100 times in other tutorials. So if you are confused by now, just watch um, more of the like older tutorials on the channel. There are great tutorials where I explain all the basics. And again, if you want to have a structured course, just check out the link in the video description. So for the cell function of the Ctrade class, we will have to provide a volume. And um, yeah, I like to make this a input variable also. So we can say we want to open the smallest possible lot size. And this is now the lots variable. And then we can choose the symbol, the, the open price, the stop loss, the TP. But for now, I don't want to do this. I just want to open a position. And yeah, also here I want to open a buy position. So let's give it a go in the strategy tester. And don't forget to compile, then go back to the um, to the meter trader and wait. Some program program is opening positions. Let me remove this. So let's go to the strategy tester, and you can open it by clicking Control and R on your keyboard, or go here to view and then open the strategy tester from there. Also, we can close the toolbox and toolbox gone. 
Okay, so once you're here, you want to go to visualize in the strategy tester and then choose the program that you created. So for me, it is the RSI grid program. Let's go select it. We choose the symbol and the time frame. I will go with a one hour chart here for now. And then you can also change the inputs here if you want. But I think for the first test, the default inputs are fine. Also make sure this visual mode um, tick box here is checked because if you click on start then in the lower right corner, which I did right now, you will see a visualized backtest for your program. And now we only have to wait until the RSI is above 70 or below 30. And like here we should see buy trades. Yes, so we see buy trades, so the program is working, but we also see a big problem because we posted all of the code, or we wrote all of the code in the onTick function of the program. And the onTick function is uh, executed with every single tick. So right now, wait, there's the strategy tester. In this bar here, the, the, the last two bars, um, where the bars where the RSI dropped below 30. So we will open a position with every single tick, which is of course not what we want. So let's go back to the code and make, make sure that this does not happen. So what we can do here is we, we can create another global variable, which could be named um, in bars total. And then in the on tick function, we will create another variable, which is called bars. And we will store the return value of the I bars function inside of this um, variable and the if bars function is a really simple function it just returns the number of bars in a specific chart and the chart is defined by a symbol and a time frame and we'll just choose under underscore symbol for the chart symbol and the RSI time frame from the um, wait from this input variable here the RSI time frame because this is the time frame that we are using for everything right now. So we want to check if the bars total variable holds a different value than the bars variable because in this case, we want to update the bars total variable. So this is the easiest way to make sure that the code inside of the body of this if statement is only executed once per bar. Wait, so let me get the brackets right here. So you can see this is the if statement, which will open will be opened here. So this is the curly bracket that opens the body of the if statement. Then we have this code here inside of the body of the if statement. And this is the closing bracket for this if statement. So this code is only executed if there's a new bar in the chart. And a if statement, I explained this in other tutorials, it's a really easy control structure. You just have a condition and if this condition is true, we will enter the body of the if statement. And if it's false, we will just skip the whole part here. So this is a way to make sure that the position is only opened once per bar. So if we start the exact same backtest again, we will see that we will now only open one position here at this point where we had several positions before. So this will make the program, um, yeah, a lot smoother and, and uh, uh, safer because we don't have a lot of positions. So, and you can see whenever the, the price is now coming from below 70 and it's jumping above 70 or coming from above 30 and jumping below 30, we will open a sell or buy position. And yeah, this is pretty much what the program does right now. So in the next step, we will have to make sure that all of these positions are closed at some point. So we will need some, some kind of code to count the profit of the, the open sell and or buy positions. And I think this is something we could do in the next video. So for now, I will end this first tutorial for the series. This will be a series of two or three videos. And yeah, in the next video, you will learn how to count the profit for the buy uh, and sell positions and then close the trades if there is a specific profit reached. So um, yeah. Stay tuned. If you're not subscribed already, subscribe to the channel so you will not miss out the next video. And um, as always, thanks for following. Have a great time and good trades. See you next time. Bye-bye.